hello guys this is michael from zenax snow farm here i'm in my greenhouse and i want to educate you guys on something that i feel might be important especially if you're considering going into greenhouse snail farming so in the greenhouse obviously we have plants that are in there but all plants are not equal they perform different roles and i think it's important you understand the roles each plant performs so we have plants that we have in the greenhouse because they act as food source for the snails and we also have plants that we plant in the greenhouse because they help to provide shade and help to create a local climate for the snails to flourish by local climate i mean relative humidity and temperature the snails don't necessarily feed on these kinds of plants so today i'll take you guys around my greenhouse where i have each plant identify what they are and then basically tell you guys their function inside this greenhouse if you like this content please like this video share comment if you have any questions for me and consider subscribing without further ado let's get right into it so here the first plant i would like to show you guys is the sweet potato leaf it's very soft and tender and snails especially baby snails like to feed on it so all these all these holes you're seeing we are created by snails baby snails that feed on the sweet potato they enjoy it and if you can plant it i think it will be it will be nice the second one is the bitter leaf again you see snails chopping this one as well they like to eat they like to feed on this as well thirdly we have the purple leaf here this is another plant that can be useful in the greenhouse because the baby snails and some of the adult snails as well like to feed on the leaf and the fruits as well once they're ripe okay so here we have um the plantain plantain plant now this plant is here because it's needed to provide shade as well as create um, a localized climate for the snails so a combination of all these plants staggered together you know when plants you know transpire you know transpiration they release water vapor from their leaves a collection of all these water vapor help to saturate the air and make the entire place humid for the snails to survive now the snails don't necessarily feed on the plantain or banana leaf for that matter because it's very it's very rubbery it's not easy to for them to digest so they don't they don't like unless they have absolutely no other choice you know when snails are you know pushed to the wall when there's no food available they can eat anything they can eat into blocks they can eat into anything available wood anything and it's not always um good for them so it's important that you provide as many of these plants as possible okay now these are all i'm not even sure what this plant is but it's a weed it's not something that i planted myself some of them will appear over time as long as they are helping to create a local climate or to provide shade i don't mind leaving them here because during the during the day when the temperature can get to as high as 30 degrees or more than that on a very sunny day when you enter the greenhouse and the temperature drops by about 5 to 10 degrees then you know that um, you've done you've done a good job of creating that local climate for your snails here we have the kokoyam um leaf or the kokoyam plant again this does the job of creating a local climate for the snails as well as helping to shade the floor 
of the greenhouse. Once again, the snails don't feed on this leaf. Um, unless it's the very uh, tender young ones. So if you see, I don't know if I have any young kokoyam leaf that is just sprouting. So those are the ones that snails can feed on because they are very tender and they are not yet strong or rubbery. But once they mature like this, once they grow tall, it's, it's, it, you can feel it even when you touch it. It's very rubbery and, and tough. So it's, it's hard for them to digest. They don't, they don't like feeding on this at all. All right. Now what? I guess you can also plant um, beans if you want inside your greenhouse. Here, once again, we have sweet potato covering all over the place. You can imagine how shaded this place is. So it's quite nice. Here, I also have bitter leaf that I planted here. So what I do is that whenever I harvest some of this bitter leaf to feed the, the snails, I cut it out, as you can see here, and then I take, I take um, some of the cuttings and plant it inside a um, sack of topsoil. And those cuttings will also begin to develop themselves so before you know it over time you will have a lot of vegetables planted around the greenhouse you can never have too much of them and here i think this one is it's, this one is a yam, yam leaf. I remember I planted yam here some time ago. Another important thing to have is moringa. A moringa plant. This one is a moringa as well. Same thing with the bitter leaf. You can have a lot more of these moringa plants um, via cuttings. So if I want to feed my snails um, moringa, or if I want to prepare moringa tea for my snails, it helps to boost their immune system. I can just come out, come here and cut this out. Once I cut this out, I harvest all the leaf that I want, and then I cut it into tiny, tiny pieces and replant them in sacks of uh, topsoil. That way you will have a lot more moringa over time. And also, I've noticed that the more you cut them, the more they branch out. So if you don't want, if you don't cut your moringas frequently, you will have one tall moringa plant with very little branching. But if you cut them frequently, 
then you encourage them to branch out a lot more giving you more 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 leaf dense leaf oh, this is quite big wow this is one big snail Right. And this is another sweet potato leaf that I have here. One reason why I like planting sweet potato leaf is like they they do very well as cover crops. They help cover everywhere. They can really spread out and cover the ground floor so that it will reduce the intensity of the sun hitting hitting the ground floor if you have any snails there so in, in case you're wondering this is um this is a trellis that i built here so whenever I want to plant any climbers, climbers like cucumber or watermelon, I just basically bring a sack of topsoil here. I plant it. And once they begin to sprout, come out, eventually they will get to a point where they will start climbing with, this, with the help of this support, this um, trellis. So that's why, that's why I built them quite a long time ago. If you have any questions just let me know in the comment section and i'll be able to uh, get back to you as soon as possible see what i mean by this was a, a very, very tall um, purple plant that I cut recently because it was threatening to tear open my roof. It's not actually a dwarf, as I thought. So I cut it, and when you cut it, you see that it's beginning to sprout in so many different areas. It looks like a few other ones are, are doing. So, um, yes, just to recap, the plants that we plant in the greenhouse because we need them to provide shade and to create a microclimate inside the greenhouse are uh, namely the plantain and banana as well as the cocoa yam plants. Snails don't necessarily eat these um, plants. The others... We plant them because the snails can feed on them as an, as, as an alternative if they don't want to feed on the um, fruits or formulated feed that you put inside their trough. They can feed on the vegetation, the vegetables like the sweet potato, the bitter leaf, the water leaf I have over there, or moringa, etc. Okay? I hope you found this useful. If you did, Please kindly like, share, and consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. Have a lovely day.